I got some PPE. Hold on. Howdy. I got I got some PPE. Today I'm just going to be tearing out the remainder of the stuff that's in here. I got the bulk of it done in the last video, but now obviously there still are some materials left. Without further ado, let's just get to tearing it apart. <laughs> You know, I must say, it feels so nice to get this absolute rat's nest of wiring out of the camper. I had no idea how I had things hooked up. It was just a complete mess. None of it worked. It feels nice just tearing it all out and starting from scratch. It's actually one of the best things about starting from scratch is that you wire everything. You hook everything up. You build everything so you know how to fix it if something were to go wrong while you're on the road. Pretty crazy and honestly scary to think that what's holding the entire camper to the truck is four of these super old rusty mounts held on by these tiny little rusted out screws. This one in all honesty, this one isn't in too bad of shape. Like it's pretty rusty underneath the paint, but overall it's probably pretty structurally sound still. Now this one on the other hand, this one is looking really bad. Let's go ahead and pop this one out and see what it looks like. See that? Completely, completely stripped. All of the bolts are just either stripped or just stuck in there because the wood is so old and rotted and gross and the nail or the screws are rusty. Look at that! What in the world is that? It looks like a Q-tip. Looks like this thing has been sitting in the ocean for 10 years. Now I had a lot of folks commenting on the last video saying to make sure that I address the source of the leaks before I go about fixing anything. And don't worry, without a doubt, of course, I'm gonna go around the entire exterior and I'm gonna put new sealant around everything. I'm gonna replace any old seals, any old gaskets. Um, I'm gonna make this thing storm proof. I think that the valve probably, the fill up valve, probably leaked a ton. And when they were the old owners were filling up the water tank at some point, it probably was just leaking like crazy into the camper and causing all the water damage. That and the doors, I don't think, are sealed too well either. Um, so all of that is gonna be resealed. New seals around the window I'm gonna put in, but also the seals around the windows still look really good. So I don't, I highly doubt that that's the source of the water damage, but I'm gonna address it anyways. Now this right here is really the main culprit, I believe, for at least a lot of the damage. If you could see, there's like all these gaps and little holes in the silicone. And I think that during all this stormy weather we've been having around here too, if you see, if you could see that during all this stormy weather we've been having, I think a lot of water is getting in through there and that's what's causing it to be so wet, at least around over here. No matter what the specific source of the leak is and the cause of all the water damage, it doesn't really matter. It's kind of irrelevant because like I said, I am going to go around the entire thing and just replace everything and reseal everything. Okay, so this is what it looks like under all of the paneling. It appears that there's some wood pieces here for the mounts to grip on. 
This is foam insulation, and then here's the fiberglass layer. So I'm guessing that since they don't want to drill into the actual fiberglass, I'm guessing all of these materials are probably just like construction glued down onto the shell. And then that's probably the way that the whole camper is constructed. I've actually always been so curious on how they constructed the camper because I knew that there was a fiberglass shell and there was some kind of wood framing, obviously that's the thing that held up all of the, the, the fixtures, like the cabinets and stuff. But I also was aware that you don't wanna drill into the fiberglass to mount the wood. So I was curious on how they did it, but it makes sense after seeing this that more than likely they used construction glue to uh, fix the wood kind of, I guess, frame to the fiberglass shell and then drill in all of the cabinets into the wooden framing that's glued to the that's glued to the shell. That's what I'm thinking. I guess we'll find out more as I rip open the wall panels. So I totally would have also imagined that these panels were stapled or something to the actual insulation, but it looks like the only adhesion that they used was some kind of construction adhesive. No actual like metal fasteners or anything were used. Same thing over here. There's foam insulation and then there's a few wooden pieces that are also probably glued and those are there to help mount stuff from the outside. This piece right here is actually where the camper mount on the outside is, or not the camper mount, the, uh, the jacks. That's where the jacks attach, or the mount I should say. And the mount just screws into this. The screws that are holding the jack plate in place, they probably also strengthen the bond between this and the shell. So the wood piece right along here is where the belly band attaches from the outside. That's the piece that holds or that seals the two clamshell pieces coming together. This is the where the belly band meets. And the wood from right here to right about here is, and it's really hard to tell because the lighting is bad, but this whole section from here to here is completely rotted and water damaged. And that leads me to believe that the source of the leak, at least over here, is indeed the door frame, like I was saying. On the outside, there's many spots where there's big gaps in the silicone that goes around the door frame. So I think that right around here where the belly band meets the door frame is one of the worst spots. And hence, that's why I have water damage right in here. So this is the door frame here. And as you can see, all of the wood in here is rotted. It's falling apart. It's in terrible condition. So I think this is just confirming my suspicion that the majority of the leaking, at least over on this side, is coming from the door frame itself on the exterior. So this is the silicone that seals the door frame and you can tell that there's just all kinds of cracks and little gaps and holes. And this is probably the worst of it. I did put some silicone on it just before rainy season began but all of this was completely exposed and it goes all the way down to the bottom. So who knows how long this has been leaking. I have to keep blasting music in here because there's this dumb dog right outside of the shop that won't stop barking. It literally has not stopped barking this entire time I've been working here, day in and day out. That dog keeps barking. going to be so satisfying to get rid of. Oh my lord. Oh lordy. Woo. 
look how bad that is, guys. Look at this. It's literally just like, it's like wet dirt. It's like a wet piece of cardboard. Oh, that's so, so bad. Look at that. Holy moly, guys. That is so, so bad. I don't even understand how there could be that much water to do that much damage. I've never seen a piece of wood so water damaged in my life. It literally turned into a piece of wet cardboard. Unbelievable. And to think that's the piece of wood that the camper mount was holding on to. That piece of wet, soggy cardboard. <sighs> Oh boy. This renovation really needed to get done. That's wood. Oh yeah, yeah, that's gross. Okay. I have no words, guys. I'm just glad that I'm wearing a mask now. Because this, Lord knows what's in here. Oh, look at that. It's literally like a piece of paper. This camper is messed up. Like seriously, seriously messed up. I can't believe that I spent so many nights. I spent weeks in this camper. Spending the night, breathing in all of the air and whatever other kinds of crap and toxins are just embedded in that disgusting rotten wood. <laughs> oh, well, not much I could do about that now, but it's so much worse than I thought. It's always worse than you think when it comes to wood rot. Always worse. Definitely nicest in the bedroom area. There's no water damage at all up here. So it's a little bit, it's a little bit tough to tear away all of this nice material. But at the same time, after seeing all the water damage over there, I'm kind of ready to just yank everything out.
Today's project ended up being a lot bigger than I was expecting. I thought I was just gonna take the liners off the wall and it'd be pretty quick, but <laughs> should have known better, right? Anything involving this renovation is gonna take at least three times longer than I anticipate. I'm a little bit bummed out right now. The water damage is far worse than I even expected when I was tearing everything out the other day and I saw the soft spots. I knew that there was gonna be some, but man, that that's just horrible. It's in really bad shape. And I guess it's not a huge deal because I was gonna build everything from scratch either way, but still the fact that I bought it in this condition is it's kind of kind of sucks. I actually just had turned down another camper that I went to look at because I saw signs of water damage. But in all honesty, when I saw this one, I think my emotions got the best of me and I just wanted to get it so bad that I didn't really thoroughly inspect it. And I kind of just assumed like, oh yeah, it's fiberglass, it's fine. <sighs> but it's too late for remorse now. Now all that I can do is get excited to build it up. I already have some ideas, but I'll let the footage speak for itself. It just looks not ideal in there right now. <laughs> I cannot believe how wet the subfloor is. It's soaked. It's literally glistening right now. It's so wet. Where the heck did all this water come from? So I left all of the windows and the door to the camper completely open overnight to give it a chance to air out and hopefully dry out a little bit. And I wanted to bring over a dehumidifier, but as it turns out, they're like extremely expensive. So instead, I'm just using this little space heater here. The first thing that I'm gonna be doing today is removing this, this carpet. I believe it's just adhesive onto the wood material that it's stuck to, uh, but I guess we'll find out. So I managed to get all the carpet off and what's left is this thin wood paneling. I was actually always curious what was underneath the ceiling, if it was just like attached to fiberglass, but I think that this is just wood panels and there must be some support beams or you know some kind of framing underneath that the panels are actually attached to. And it looks like I'm probably, not probably, I'm gonna have to tear the panels off, unfortunately, because I believe all of the wiring, as you can see here, all of the wiring looks like it was put in before anything else. So I literally have to tear pretty much everything apart to get to the original wiring and get that out of there. This is the original vent where the fridge used to go. And I don't know how well you could tell, but the wood, the wood up in here where the vent is, is all rotted out. So that means at one point, this vent was also leaking. Here you could really see it. It's like dark colored and it just looks bad. So I'm gonna have to tear all of that out as well. After seeing it with the carpet taken off, I'm a little bit less intimidated by the wood paneling on the top because I was imagining like a perfectly molded piece of paneling that they machined somehow and were able to just like adhere the entire panel to the roof. And I thought, how am I gonna replicate that? But it looks like there's just a bunch of individually cut panels attached and they kind of just like tape in between the gaps to seal everything in, which looks totally doable. I know it's gonna be still a big project, but a lot easier than what I was expecting. Okay, 
This stuff is just an absolute nightmare to take off because it's not coming off clean in full pieces. Part of it is getting stuck behind, kind of like when you peel off a sticker and the residue that still wants to stick to the surface that you're taking off. Um, it's, it's a similar concept. I'm tearing off the wood panels, but part of the panels are staying stuck to the surface. I don't know if that made sense, but it's really annoying. Next, I'm gonna to try to remove this box so I could get to the mount that's underneath. Since I'm gonna be replacing all of the different mounting brackets, uh, this box has gotta go. This is actually where the propane gets stored. I'll show you on the outside. You guys have seen me open and close this door plenty of times. It's just where my propane gets stored. Uh, I don't exactly know how they have it attached here. My guess is once I move the insulation, there will be screws or something that are holding it together. So I guess there's only one way to find out. This is the mount that I'm trying to take out so I could get replaced. As you can see, the box is in the way of taking the mount out. There's the screw head. Stripped, of course. Every single screw is completely stripped out. Look, look at Look at that. The screw completely sheared right off. I didn't even, that was with my hand. These screws, these were barely hanging on. Oh my, look at this. I seriously did not even have to unscrew any of it. This whole thing just pulled right out. I'm so glad, it, it, it sucks that the camper is in this condition, it really does, but I'm so glad, so glad that I just decided to tear everything out and start from scratch. Otherwise I probably wouldn't have found all of that. That is seriously sketchy, oh my gosh. No chisel needed. who knows a good way to clean all of this old nasty residue off of the inside of the fiberglass as you can see all in here it's just covered in what I assume to be some kind of dirt mold mixture of all of the above um, if you have any idea how to clean this any products any recommendations down below in the comments please thank you Unfortunately, I've run out of time today. I have a few other things I gotta go take care of, but I'll be back tomorrow, of course. I'll be back tomorrow, of course. So I'm sitting here editing and I'm realizing that if I continue and put all of this footage into one video, it's gonna literally be like a 45 minute episode, which I'm not sure you guys are into. So I've decided that I'm gonna take the rest of the footage from last week and make a smaller video that I'll be posting in a couple days from now. And I'm not sure if you guys prefer me to break it up like that into multiple smaller videos or if one larger video is preferred. I don't know, leave some comments down below and let me know your opinion on that. But either way, that's gonna do it for this one. Thank you guys like always for watching. You guys go out there and go on some adventures of your own. Live life. Beat the status quo. Y'all know the drill. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you very soon in the next one. Peace.